Good afternoon, gang. Saturday. All right. So something else to pay attention to and take action on if you want to. I'm going to tell you what I did and why. It's up to you whether you want to do it or not. I'm not trying to panic anybody or say this is inevitable or anything like that. What I'm just telling you is the information that's out there and what I would suggest. Okay. You probably know that in this whole Russia-Ukraine deal, Russia has, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, created or caused or did, you know, a whole bunch of cyber attacks on Ukraine uh, in government facilities, et cetera, et cetera, but including the banking system to the point of wiping there's called there's a wiper program that basically just eliminates everything from a bank's uh computer system so including your balance now i'm not saying that that isn't going to happen here i'm not saying it is going to happen here what i am going to tell you is what the pros if you will are saying in the U.S. Now, the reason I got onto this subject, you've heard me talk about Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Mountaintop Prepper, and I spoke with them this morning, and they had dinner last night with friends of theirs, I guess that they've known since elementary school, uh, who one who is an executive at a local credit union. And the story there was he had gotten three calls from the FDIC yesterday telling them to be aware of cyber attacks, that they were expecting uh, the FDIC, these are her words from him, okay, that cyber attacks on the banking system in the U.S. were imminent. I'm just saying that's third-hand information here. All right, so... I decided to go do some digging and, you know, you guys know me, I'm always going to look for more than one source on something. George Kurtz, who is the CEO of CrowdStrike, who is one of the, which is one of the uh, world's biggest cybersecurity firms, okay, giving you this, uh, CrowdStrike does the cybersecurity for 14 of the 20 largest banks in the United States. I'd say he's a qualified expert on this, okay? This is a quote, and I'll link this article. I'm going to link a couple of them below so you can read this. I've talked to a lot of banks recently, a lot of senior executives, and they're concerned. They're very concerned about what might happen here, and they should be. Uh, due to the widespread consequences of so-called wiper, vi wiper viruses can have, they're designed to basically wipe a system. When we think about cyber, it has no boundaries for collateral damage. Okay? When you've got the head of cybersecurity saying, and they should be worried, that piques my interest. Okay? So then looking around, one of the country's largest cybersecurity law firms, and I'll give you the question that he was asked so, I, so the answer makes sense. In an interview yesterday, a uh, gentleman's name is Michael Zweibach from Zweibach, Fison, Fison, Zweibach, Fison, and Coleman, based out of Los Angeles. I looked him up. Interview question. Michael, it's Brian Chung here. What might any sort of possible cyber attack on American citizens uh, look like? I mean, what should people be watching out for? I had seen warnings about possible ransomware attacks. What is usually the Russian playbook for these type of things? Zweibach's response. Well, typically what they'll do is start with an attack similar to this, where they're over... A, uh, denial of service, where they're overwhelming specific websites that are critical to various different parts of their strategy, whether it's banking, whether it's the electrical grid. And there's all very specific reasons why they go after those sectors. The grid is for the purpose of de debilitating the fact that households have electricity, which affects the population. The banking is, hey, I can't go to my ATM and actually get money out. 
Once that's degraded, it, lo it allows them to implement a secondary attack, which is let's go in now with their malicious software and actually wipe accounts, steal money, steal passwords, which just sets them up for a much greater attack downstream. Okay. No secret here, Mrs. P and I went to the bank yesterday and took cash out. Okay. We've talked about this many times. A lot of you have said that you only keep enough cash in the bank to pay your bills and the rest of it's at home. I hope to God you have a safe or something that is fireproof, waterproof, whatever it is to put it in. You're not just stuffing it under the mattress. The other thing Mrs. Mountaintop Prepper told me yesterday when she went to the bank was there was a line out the door for people getting cash. Now, mind you, this is Knoxville, Tennessee. The bank teller told her she's never seen that before. Again, this is secondhand information. I wasn't there, but I trust Mr. and Mrs. Mountaintop Prepper implicitly. They are certainly not the type of people that are going to bullshit me on anything. So what do you do? All right. If you... And again, these are if you want to. If you believe this, if you think it's going to happen, then do something. If you think, up, oh, this isn't going to happen, don't. Okay, I'm not going to tell anybody, oh my God, you've got to do this. That's not how I operate. You know this. I've said many, many times, have cash at home, preferably six months worth of bills. Okay, maybe more at this point if you want. If the banks get wiped out, okay, if this wiper program comes in and has and eliminates all the data the bank has, it's going to be up to you to prove what you had. I would highly, highly suggest for a while here that every day you get online onto your bank account and save as a PDF or something a copy of your recent activity up until the previous day. Because if the banks get wiped out, you're still covered by FDIC insurance. But the first thing FDIC is going to ask is, what did you have in there? Prove it. And if you can show them, okay, again, this is a hypothetical. You know, all of a sudden the bank gets completely wiped out tomorrow, February 27th. And you show a printout of your bank activity as of February 26th, obviously you've now proven what you had in the bank. If you try to go show them last month's statement, then they're going to be, well, what did you have in the way of bills come out? Did you go to the grocery store? And you're going to be like, I don't know. And then where are your receipts and everything? And so you get a real mess. Have a printout of the activity that cleared your bank account yesterday. I mean, you swipe your debit card, it shows as a pending charge or whatever immediately. I mean, literally, you go buy something on Amazon, and before you close the Amazon window, it's already showing on your bank account as a pending charge. You'll know down to the penny what you've got. I would highly suggest doing that as well as having cash. It's only for your best interest because... It's not like we're going to get any advance notice, guys. You're going to go to the ATM. You're going to go to the grocery store. And 15 minutes ago, <clears throat> you filled your car with gas. And the card worked fine. And then you go into the grocery store, and your card doesn't work. And if you guys remember, when Mrs. P and I were driving to South Carolina last year, we stopped somewhere to get gas. And... Both of us were freaking out because we went in the gas station and this credit card didn't work and this credit card didn't work and this credit card didn't work. And, and the lady's like, I don't know. Everything worked fine a couple of minutes ago. And we were freaking out. We thought everything had got wiped out. I went out to the truck and I was calling the bank and the bank's like, oh, we've got no problem. We went down the road, went to another gas station. We had no problem. It was a problem within the store that had just happened. That will freak you out real fast, guys, when all of a sudden you don't have access to your money, especially if you're away from home at the moment. <laughs> so, you know, get some cash out, my opinion. 
get some cash out, whatever you can, and make sure you are printing out copies of your, not printing out necessarily, but at least keeping PDFs of your statement every day so that should it happen, you can print out the most recent one and have proof of what you had in the way of the bank. We'll see what else happens. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tonight. And ball out.